Many of you may have been here on last week. We talked about uh, the power of agreement. Your connection matters. Amen. Uh, question, did anybody pass out any letters this week? Anybody pass out any letters? Amen. Amen. If you don't know what that means, you'll know by the end of this message. Amen. Go to Matthew chapter 18, verse 19 and 20 in the New Living. Let's do the New Living today. Yeah, I want to get you right in this. I'm going to try to get through all of it so we'll really know what it means to have the right connection. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19 and 20 in the New Living Translation. There you go. It reads, I also tell you this. If two of you agree on earth concerning anything you ask, my father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together as my followers or in my name in the King James Version, I am there among them. I also tell you this. If two of you do what? Agree. If two of, if two of you do what? Okay, I want you to get that. If two of you do what? Okay. If two of you agree on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will, be, will do it for you for where two or three gather together as my Father is, I am there among them. There's power in agreement. So we talked about this a little bit on last week. I want to make sure that you get it in you so you can move forward with the second half of this year. I believe that this is going to be the best half of the year. I don't know if you know it or not, but we have just crossed over into the second half of the year. And so I want to make sure that I'm agreeing with the right people. I'm connected to the right people because there's power in agreement. Amen. Amen. The word agreement means to come into or be in harmony regarding a matter of opinion. Coming to a mutual arrangement. It is the state of being on one accord. It is an arrangement of connections that is accepted by all parties. It means to come into or be in harmony. Regarding a matter of opinion, coming into a mutual arrangement, the state of being on one accord. It is an arrangement of connections that is accepted by all parties. I like this word harmony. I like this word harmony because harmony would suggest that, and I talked about this last week, when you are uh, in any type of music, harmony means you're on one key, but everybody has, you're on one note, but everybody has different keys. Okay, so if I say we're in uh, A flat, when you put the musicians in that particular key, everybody has their own part within that key. You got soprano, alto, anybody know what they sing? Okay. Some of y'all just, I'm, I sing everything, Reb. I'm soprano, alto, tenor, depending on what time of day it is. <laughs> but you, 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 you got to understand, and some of y'all, I'm just a tenor, males and females. Amen. <clears throat> So you have to know <laughs> that there is a key, but everybody have their different notes, soprano, alto, tenor. But when you sing, everybody, despite having their own part, they're on the same key, which means they are in harmony. Say amen to that. And I also talked about little Annie Mae Bullock, right? Uh, uh, she, she, could, she was on her own thing. She didn't, she didn't want to sing now part. She just wanted to be her own person. And in this particular season, you got to be in harmony. It's time out for being your own person. Everybody want to be a solo artist. But I'm telling you, there's power when you are together. And so it's like harmony. In Psalms 133, verses 1 to 3 in the New Living, it says, How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. Say harmony. harmony. For harmony, watch this. Harmony is as precious as the anointing oil that, that was poured over Aaron's head, that ran down his beard, and onto the borders of his robe. Harmony is as refreshing as the dew from Mount Harmon that falls on the mountains of Zion. And there the Lord has pronounced his blessings, even life everlasting. Say this, there's blessings... In harmony. So what that means is if we can walk together and, and dwell together in harmony, God will bless us even the more. The passion, I wrote this down, passion for the church involves diving into the community of the local church. 
It means doing life with other Christians by pursuing relationships that extend beyond the church building and official church functions. And that's why we have small groups, because small groups get you out of the confounds of the church and it puts you into other areas where you can represent Christ there and you can have agreement partners. Right. You want to have agreement partners. Sometimes it's hard to touch and agree when the house is so big. But when you're in your small group and you have a certain group of people around you, it's easy to get that point of contact for an agreement. Say amen to that. Amen. The New Testament word for this experience is called fellowship. Say fellowship. fellowship. Watch this. We've grown so accustomed to the word that it has lost its meaning and power. People don't fellowship like they used to. When I was coming up, uh, everybody was at Big Mama's house because that's what you did on Sundays and throughout the week. You fellowship. Now, I don't know about this new church. Don't nobody want to be bothered with nobody. And if you're not careful, you're going to lose the fiber of the church because there's no fellowship. It's time out for coming to church every Sunday and you get your little word. You don't speak and you leave. That's not godly. Old church, although they were small, they knew everybody. Everybody looked out for each other. If you even look in the book of Acts, they sold their possessions to look out for each other because they understood fellowship. They came together, they fellowshiped, they ate, and the Lord added to the church daily as a result of that. And fellowship is, is not doing life alone. You want to you get to a place, man, where, where you're able to do life with somebody that's pushing you to do life the way God intended you to do it. Those are called uh, vision pushers. You want to get around people that's going to help push your vision. That's not going to hate. Not vision drainers. Uh, I, ain't, I ain't got a lot of time to talk about that because there's a difference. And so you want to make sure in this season that you are fellowshipping, you are establishing relationships and connections because in this season, your connection matters. Say amen to that. Your first connection should be with God. Before we can agree with others, we must first agree with God and his word. You have to understand that your relationship with God is the most important relationship you should have in your life. I'll say that again. Your relationship with God should be the most important relationship in your life. That is the most important connection that you have in your life. Why? Because God is the power source. And your connection to God is established through Christ. Go to John chapter 14 verse 6. That, that power source is important. Because you can be connected to a lot of things and not getting maximum results. It could be because you're not connected to maximum power. He says this, John 14, verse 6. Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. No one can come to the Father except through me. So if you're going to have a connection with God, it is established through Christ. Go to John 15. John 15, verse 5. Yeah, John 15, verse 5. I want you to see this. Your connection with God is established through Christ. And if you're going to be connected to the Father, you got to go through the Son. Some of us trying to bypass the Son and go straight to the Father. Okay. He says this, he says, yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me, watch it now, and I am them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. You see that? He says, for apart from me, you can do nothing. Go to verse six. He says, anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. Verse 7. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. I want you to connect, catch this. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you can ask for anything you want. If you remain in me, I remain in you. 
Somebody say connection. connection. You can ask for anything you want. The problem is we're asking for stuff and we're not connected to the available power source to make things manifest. There is no way you can expect maximum results when you're not connected to the maximum power source. Somebody tell your neighbor, so you got to be connected to the right power source. Because uh, connections come in various ways, in two ways particularly. Um, I talked about this last Sunday. You can, you can be connected to receive power in one instance, or you can be connected to get burned up. So, uh, if, if for instance, your car battery goes out, right, Pops, and, and, and you need a jump. And so, in order to get uh, uh, an effective jump, you have to connect to another vehicle that has maximum power in their battery. Okay? And so, you get the cables, positive to positive, negative to negative, right? Red and black, for those who you don't know. You connect, <laughs> you connect the battery that has the power to the battery with no power. And so what happens is, like my, my Uncle Richard, he used to yell out, give it a little gas, because he smoked cigarettes, so his throat went all the way, you know, it, it wasn't clear, y'all got an uncle like that. And he'll connect the cables and give it a little gas. And so you give it a little gas, then he say, turn it on. You turn it over, and the result is, the battery that was dead receives power from the connection to the good battery. Okay? Many of you are not receiving power because you connected to a bad battery. And so it don't matter how many times Uncle Richard said, give it a little gas. You're just going to be giving it gas and ain't nothing happening because you're connected to something that has no power. It's 830. I shouldn't even be this loud. So there's a connection where you can receive power, but then there's a connection where you can get burned out. Because if your connection, watch this, if your connection is not properly connected, it can cause a burn reaction. Yeah. 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 My mom used to say, don't, don't play with the sockets now. Don't, don't stick nothing in the sockets because you mess around and get shocked, right? And that's a bad connection because you can't stick no hanger in no socket and don't expect to get no return, y'all. <laughs> And so what happens? You know, some, some people, you just got to learn the hard way. And so you take that socket, take that hanger, you look around and you mess around and stick that in the socket. That's a bad connection. What happens is you get shocked, right? Uh, I, I had to find this picture of Tom and Jerry because I remember that episode when, when, when Jerry tricked Tom into getting connected to this socket and he got shocked, right? And, and what happens is, you think that you're being connected to something because when you look at a socket, you wouldn't think that much power or current could come from that. But when it's used recklessly or the connection is not right, the very thing that looks good will burn you every time. And so you got people that come to church, they're connecting to this bad socket and they're being shocked. And that's why when you get shocked, your, your body go numb, right? You can't function properly. So when it's time for praise and worship, you come to church, the praise and worship leader, everybody, every other gun is a, and you like. Because figuratively speaking, you cannot function if you're shocked on a regular basis. Your act, the activity of your limbs is not functioning properly because you keep getting shocked. And people in the church, folks, I don't know what it is. You can't learn from your first ex shock experience. You got to keep going back. You get shocked, ah, uh -huh. come to church, I need prayer. You go right back, get shocked, ah, uh -huh. I need deliverance. Get shocked, ah, uh -huh. I need faith. We decree the prayer of faith over you, you go right back. Ah, uh -huh. pastor, I don't know why everything in my life is burnt. Can I give you an answer? Because you keep sticking your hands in a bad connection and you're getting burned. Just. I remember one time my, my uncle Richard. 
don't laugh at my uncle. What y'all? He, he used to keep a half a pint of gin in his back pocket. And they worked on cars all day. And so I guess somehow he didn't connect the plugs up right. And it was sparks all in the garage. And the sparks was so bad, all you heard was, take it off, take it off. Hey, take it off, take it off. Some of you, watch the revelation. You need people in your life that when them sparks start to flickering, you need somebody to say, take it off, get off of it, get away from it, go hook it, get it off. And some of y'all burning up right now because you don't have the good people around. Okay. Look at somebody and shout, take it off. <laughs> And so your connection comes, your connection to God comes through Christ. Y'all stay focused. The benefit of this connection to God comes through, fight, through Christ. There's a benefit. Let me give you a few, then we'll move. Romans 8, uh, 37, 39 in the New King James Version. He says, yeah, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Who is him? Right. We are more than conquerors through Christ. Right. For I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You see that you cannot effectively be connected to God without going through Christ. OK, that's where your benefit of the connection comes from through Christ. When you pray and you seal that thing, you don't say in God's name it shall be done. No, he gave you the name that's above every other name. So the benefits of the connection to God comes through Christ. In the name of Jesus, right? That's where your power really kicks in from that connection. Say amen to that. Go to 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Verse 7 through 9, I just want to hit verse 9. It says this. 1 John chapter 4, verse 9. In this, the love of God was manifest toward us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. We may live through who? Who is him? We may live through Christ, which means the benefit of the connection to God is through Christ. Now, understand this. I'm just throwing this out for free. When you get connected to God, the Holy Spirit comes too. Right? The Holy Spirit comes to guide you, to lead you. It's to bring things to your remembrance. It's to help you do the right things. You know that first, that, that silent voice that you hear? When you make a bad decision and you say, something told me not. That's Holy Spirit. And when you connect it to God, you always get that something told me comes with. Now, that's your first connection, 24 minutes, perfect time. Your second connection should be with godly people. Amen. Godly people. As believers, we should always be connected to somebody. We must know that at least two people can agree to agree or agree to disagree. Whichever way we want to look at it, it means there is a common ground for moving forward either to the glory of God or for your own selfish reasons. It can also be said that there must be an agreement to go ahead or not to go ahead with anything that comes into your life. And in order for you to understand that, you must understand that your connection matters. You must have at least one companion or one partner to begin the process of agreement. Okay? Agreement usually comes in twos. So you got to be careful who you're connected to. Especially in the second half of this life. I was spending some time with the Lord, Pastor T, and, and, and the Lord shared with me how big the second half of this year for me is going to be. 
And so in order for me to make sure I'm focused on the things of God, I cannot have any outside influence that would cause me to go off course. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. I can't afford to have nobody on the outside that's going to cause me to go off course other than what God has called me to do. Because I need everything that God promised me I need it. Maybe you don't need it. Everything that God promised me, I need it. I want it. And if you're in my life and you're not agreeing for what God has planned for my life, y'all remember the letter? Sorry, David. You know, I went back and watched that, Brenda. Shelly comes out. First of all, and I'm going to go back to my man. He, in the temptations, for those of you who weren't here last week, the temptations... Uh, it was time for David Ruffin to be disconnected from the group because he was acting funky. He didn't want to be in harmony, right? And so he gets out, he in rehearsal, and he gets out of a Rolls Royce with a driver. He late. He gets out the car, you know, re rehearsal as usual, you understand? Shelly met that Mark at the, can I say Mark? Okay. She <laughs> <laughs> Shelly met him <laughs> on the way to rehearsal and gave him a letter like, here, sorry, David, we're going to have to cut you away from the group. Now, here's the thing. David Ruffin's response was crazy because, number one, he knew that his time was short with the group. Let me help you. There are people that's in your life, they know they should not be in your life. <laughs> so he gives David the letter. So David kind of like, oh, I kind of knew this was coming. Right? But now that it has come to fruition, I'm in my feelings. So David gets he mad. Are you going to put me out the group? I'm in the group. I'm in the temptations. He runs up to the window and he smiles. That lets me know that you already knew that your days were numbered in this connection anyway. So that makes passing the letter more easy. Y'all better catch what I'm saying. Because it's people that's in your life, they know they should be disconnected. So don't, don't think it's strange when you give them the letter and they don't have no response. Because they already knew. So you can stop le uh, losing sleep. And I don't know how I'm going to tell them. I don't know how I'm going to tell him I don't want to be connected. Tell them. They know. They know. David wasn't even shocked. He took that letter and was like, man. But he had to act a fool because everybody was looking. <laughs> Be careful who you're connected to, right? Go to 2 Corinthians. I love this. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. In the new living. In the new living. You got to make sure that you're connected to godly people. Not just good people. You know, there's some good people that's not going to make it to heaven. <laughs> You're going to get to heaven and be like, what? Sister Jackson didn't make it? She was such a good lady. Sister Jackson wasn't saved, Jack. She was good, but she had her own little thing going. All right. Okay. Okay. Connect to the right people. Godly people. Can I say that? God, there's a difference from good people and godly people. I ain't got time to talk about it, but you need to know it's a difference. All right, be careful. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. New living. Are you there? Okay. He says, <laughs> like this. Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. Period. <laughs> I want you to see this because I don't, I don't want you to think, you know, Pastor Twine hating him. I want nobody to have no friends. Please. This Bible, don't team up with those who are unbelievers, period. If it was a comma, then that'd give you a little leeway. But period would suggest ain't no negotiation or compromising with that. Why? How can righteousness be a part with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? Come on, 15. What harmony, remember? We on key. Everybody got their part. What harmony could there be between Annie Mae Bullock and the choir at the church? <laughs> what harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? Go to verse 16. 
And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? That's a whole nother message. Because some of y'all be bringing y'all little idols to church and you thinking that you worshiping God for real, but you worshiping in that little idol and that's in your pocket. For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. In other words, there is no reason for you to be connected to people who are ungodly. And I believe, I believe this so, so wholeheartedly that the, the, the new strategy from the enemy is to influence you through others to cause you to forfeit what God has called you to do. That's why you can't afford, you can't afford to go out. I, I'm. In this season, you can't afford to be on Facebook taking selfies at the concert and your area out area. You know what area I'm talking about. You can't, you can't, you can't do that because that means you're connected to ungodly people. You can't go to the club and they puff puff passing and you get one. I'm going to just hit it this one. Oh, ain't no weed smokers. I'm sorry. Everybody saved, came straight from heaven this morning. I ain't never did nothing. You got to disconnect yourself from ungodly people. And you need to learn how to say no. Boy, that word no, it got so much anointing on it. <laughs> That's it. It's a complete say, uh, we going out. You going to go? Uh, no. And if you like me, I like to build up. I like to build. The guys at my job, you know, they do a uh, happy hour. Yeah, we gon' when we get off work, we going over here. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Twan, you want to go? No. Got to be crazy, man. My wife and kids, I don't. I don't. Hey, you know, we hanging out Friday. You should come on, man. You know what I'm saying. Sometimes you got to huff and puff. Like, <laughs> no, I'm not going to no club with you on Friday. We don't do that. And they're going to keep coming. Every time it's something. Hey, we, hey, we having a uh, basketball, an NBA finals party. You should come. <laughs> no, I'm not coming to hang with y'all. I know what y'all do. And this is the sad part about believers. You know what they do. So why is there even a consideration? All your friends smoke. Smoke. I'll leave it at that. They, they smoke and they engage in ungodly activity in such you should not participate in. And you know that. But you say stuff like, man, let me think about it. I don't know what I got to do. No, ain't no thought. No. And I don't understand what makes new converts make them feel like I'm strong enough to hang with my friends and I know they're going to be smoking. And I, I, got the, I got the power. I, I could go. I'm going to just go on down here and watch this little game. I ain't going to do nothing. Watch this. Here's the enemy. The devil can't make you do nothing. I don't know where we get to. You know, the devil made me do it. The devil is a lie and you are too. But what the devil does is he influences you or he pushes the agenda. And so when you're somewhere you don't supposed to be, when now everything is going on, you got to be able to control yourself in an environment that you're not prepared for dealing with. And so now they get to doing what they're doing. You ain't strong enough. Next thing you know, you're doing what they do. But then you got the nerve to say, well, you know, the church anniversary coming up. You should come to my church. And watch this, the same no that I give, that's what your friends give when you invite them to church. How you going to be the prayer warrior and the drug pusher at the church? You trying to get people to come to church? They like, I'm not coming to your church. We just blow yesterday. What we doing? Nah, you know, we got a good church, the praise team and the pastor. They good. Ooh, let me hit that. It's good. You should come to my church. No. No, no, listen, because I've been in church my entire life. My whole life I've been in church. And the sad part about it is the reasons why we can't produce more Christians is because of Christians. You can't have bogus Christians talking about we're going to evangelize right after we... 
Get around godly people. I got a Bible, Amos chapter 3, verse 3. It says, can two people walk together without agreeing on a direction? Matthew, again, in that same text, he says, if two of you agree. Understand this, if two of you, if two of you agree. The agreement starts with twos. So you got to always partner, partner up with another believer. For some of you that are struggling to get out of your circle, find another believer. Find one. All you need is one person. Hey, listen, I'm trying to disconnect from these people. I don't know how. Can't you help me? I'm going to partner my faith with yours. We're going to believe God for deliverance and we're going to get you up out of there. One person. It starts with twos. Mark chapter 6 verse 7. It talks about how Jesus called the 12 to himself and he began to send them out two by twos because he understood that in order for you to have maximum agreement, you needed somebody that you needed to agree with. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes in the New Living. We can stay in the New Living. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9. I want you to see something. Is that it? Yeah. It says, two people are better off than one. That's real simple, right? For they can help each other succeed. Two people are better off than one for they can help each other succeed. It's good to have somebody in your life that's going to help agree with what you're believing God for. Go to the next verse. Help each other succeed. I like that. If one person falls, <laughs> the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Go to the next verse. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? Verse 12. A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. But two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Watch this here. When you have a person that you can agree with and you get the benefit of Holy Spirit, you got a three, four cord, cord right? I like, uh, I, I guess I shouldn't tell all my little business. I like Kung Fu movies. You remember Bruce Lee, right? And uh, Bruce Lee, whenever he found somebody that was on the same agenda, it would always be him and the other dude against like 500 people. Right? And so Bruce would just kind of back up. You got it? And they back to back. And they fight all 500. It seemed like people was just coming out the sky to fight Bruce Lee. Just, Ooh, what? Hey, where they come? Watch this. If you are alone, chances are you're going to lose every time. But when you have somebody in your life that you can fight back to back with, that you truck. Pastor Terrence, stand up real quick. I love this jacket, man. I got to get me one. Turn around, face that way. Listen. When we back to back, we covering everything. Yeah, you spread both arms out. Everything is covered. He got that area, I got this area. So whatever way the enemy tries to attack, we got... Right? <laughs> right? Now watch this. Watch this. Stand right there. If, if you by yourself, this is what you look like. Because you got to cover everything by yourself. Chances are you're going to be getting hit from every area. Oh, this might get hit. Oh, but watch this. Come here, Pastor T. When you got somebody that got your back, when you're connected to the right people, you ain't got to worry about getting into a fight and losing because you got somebody that's going to fight with you. Thank you, Pastor T. Ask somebody, say, hey, do you got my back or what? Here's why. Here's why you have to understand everybody needs somebody. Everybody needs somebody. You ready for this? Adam had Eve. Abraham had Lot. 
Moses had Aaron. Caleb had Joshua. David had Jonathan. Elijah had Elisha. Ruth had Naomi. Daniel had the three Hebrew boys. The three Hebrew boys had Daniel. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. Kings had prophets. Jesus had Peter, James, and John. The disciples had each other. Paul had Timothy, Philemon, and he had the other ones. Everybody needs somebody. And so he says in the text, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask, it will be done for you in my father, by my father in heaven. There's power in agreement. Ephesians, <laughs> Ephesians, go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 through 3 in the New Living. God never intended for us to do life alone. You need somebody. And I don't know where we get this thing from where I'm going to do it all by myself. I'm good. I'm going to do me. That's why you keep getting your head split by the devil because you doing you. You know you got to snatch air when you do that. I'm doing me, boo-boo. Okay. I, where did that come from? It's just... Our culture is something else. Yeah. Ephesians, are you there? Ephesians verses 1 through 3 in chapter 4. He says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you were called. With all loneliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. Say bearing with one another. That means putting up with. Watch this. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Go to, go to verse 13. Chapter 4, verse 13, yeah. Watch this. Till we all come into the what? Unity. Till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. You got to know that there's power in agreement. And some of you, many of you are trying to do it by yourself. Can I suggest to you that if you can link up to somebody else with power, they're going to give you power and then you're going to work your power together. Go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 2. Ooh. It looks better like dancing, for instance. You got to have a partner. You know, you can step and look cute by yourself, right? Because you you all wrong, but because you by yourself, you think you killing, Jack. You... But what? Watch this. It looks better when you have a partner. Watch this. That know what they doing. You ever seen the Palmer step? Lord have mercy, Jesus Christ. They have you think like, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You need a good partner. Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other. Paul was writing to the church of Philippi. And he was talking about them being on one accord to get things done. And so he says, make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. When you can get somebody that agrees with you in the spirit, you begin working together with one mind and purpose. Can I tell you this? If the church came on one purpose and on one accord, a lot of things we dealing with, we wouldn't have to. Even in the church, even in the church, if we would get to a place where we can get on the same page, the power from God would produce and manifest like never before. And then certain things you won't have to deal with because there are certain things that come during the power of agreement, like power. Go to Acts chapter 16. Uh, when, you, when you have... The right connection, the power of agreement, the power of agreement brings power. Acts chapter 16, verse 25, 26. Watch this. I know this 830, we don't really get loud and stuff, but y'all got me up here sweating and can on. My son told me this one, dad, I ain't going to make 830. <laughs> I'm going to watch online. 
because my, my son thinks I'm Cedric the Entertainer or something. And so he just, you know, I entertain him. So when I'm preaching, I try not to sweat because I don't want to entertain him. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Power of agreement. It produces power. Okay? This is why you got to connect to the right people. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Say power of, power of agreement. Can you look at this in the New King James Version? Let's, let's try that. I like the way it, it reads in that. I want you to understand. I got more, but I'm going to stop with this one. Because I, wanna, I want you to understand the power of agreement makes things happen. It produces things. I mean, stuff happens when you're in agreement with the right person. And at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Who was praying and singing hymns? How many people is that? Okay. They were praying, singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Verse 26. Suddenly, as a result of their connection and being in agreement, suddenly. Do you know that if you're connected to the right person, you don't have to wait as long for things to happen? Suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. I need you to understand the activity that's taking place as a result of the agreement between Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas were praying and singing praises to God. Suddenly, because of their, their commitment and, and, and agreement in the power of God, suddenly there was a great earthquake. Watch what's happening here because some of y'all need some earthquakes in your life. Some of y'all need some things to be shaken up in your life, but you ain't connected to the right person, and so ain't nothing happened. He says, it says, suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and immediately, wait a minute, you mean to tell me you got suddenly and immediately in the same sentence as a result of Paul and Silas being in agreement? Would you look at somebody and say, it don't take God long to do nothing. Immediately, all the doors were open. Everyone's chains were loose. As a result of the coming together in agreement, something happened. The power of God came. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately, all the doors were open. Listen, if you want God to change some things in your life, get connected to the right person. If you want some things to be open, some doors to be open in your life, get with the right person. That's why it's important who you connected to. Grab somebody by the hand real quick. Now, for the next 30 seconds, ask them, say, what you believe in God for? Now, tell them. Tell them what you believe in God for. Now, watch this. For the next 30 seconds, I need you to touch and agree with them for what they're believing God for. Go. 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 Come on. Come on. Pray for them. Agree with them. I stand in full agreement that everything that you are praying for is going to come to pass and it's not going to take long. God is going to do it suddenly and immediately there will be manifestation in your life on the very thing that you're believing God for. I stand in agreement now that it won't take God long. I stand that God will give it to you right now in the name of Jesus. Now watch this. Open your mouth and celebrate for what God is doing for your partner. Now look at that person and say, it's already done because there's power in agreement and I agree with you in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and give them glory.